This video gives an overview of AADL tools that support software and systems integration. This includes a tool to generate AirInc 653 schedules and tools which allow generation and validation of a LynxOS VCT configuration file. We demonstrate the use of these tools as we walk through the integration, download, and execution of a processor image. Processing module development begins with a set of software and hardware components specified in AADL. Component suppliers provide software applications, module hardware, and infrastructure software such as real-time operating systems and device drivers. The system integrator creates configuration data to integrate all of these components together to form the module. This includes a module schedule, memory allocations, message channels between applications, and other configuration information. An RTOS that complies with the AirInc 653 standard uses a two-layered scheduling approach. Each software application is allocated to a partition. Each partition has its own protected memory. Processor time is allocated to partitions using a static, cyclic schedule of time windows where a partition may have multiple windows during a major frame cycle. This enforces both space and time isolation between software applications. During a window in which a partition is being executed, threads are scheduled for execution using preemptive priority scheduling. The system integrator must develop a schedule that satisfies the resource requirements of all software applications and also meets the end-to-end -end timing requirements on flows that may pass through multiple applications. Our ERINC 653 scheduling tool generates standard AADL. It is usable with any module that complies with the ERINC 653 standard. Some aspects of configuration are unique to a specific RTOS or board. Lynx OS 178 uses its own VCT configuration file format, and we provide a tool to generate a VCT file from a specification written in standard AADL. Because a VCT file may also contain unique and non-standard data, our tool is able to update an existing VCT file to preserve manually specified configuration data and combine it with automatically generated data. We also provide a tool to perform consistency checks across all data in the VCT file. In this video, we'll generate an example project for real-time operating system configuration. We're going to go to the new example wizard and give our project a name ping pong. We are going to choose the Linksos operating system and we'll select the schedule generation example. This will create a project that has sample AADL files as well as sample C source code that we'll be using toward the end of this video. Looking at the AADL file that is included in the example, we can see it has two partitions as well as some schedule constraints on those partitions. Let's open up the diagram for this AADL model to get a clearer view of the system. Here I'm going to zoom out and just organize the diagram a little bit so it's more visible. Feel free to pause the video here. Next, I'm going to right click on the system implementation in my model and generate a new AADL instance file. From this instance file, I can use the FASTAR schedule generation tool to generate standard AADL compliant with the AADL ERINC 653 Annex and applicable to any ERINC 653 real-time operating system. In addition to satisfying the typical constraints imposed by the standard and user-specified periods, compute times, and deadlines, it also accepts AADL flow constraints on sequences of thread executions and message transfers. These allow users to specify end-to-end -end latency requirements on information flows that pass through multiple partitions.
To generate a configuration file, we are going to create an instance from our generated AADL schedule model. Then we will select that instance and choose the RTOS configuration generation option. This is going to prompt us asking if we want to create a new VCT or update an existing one. The VCT is the LynxOS configuration file that has the schedules for your partitions. We've created a new VCT, which I'll quickly go through here. It includes the number of partitions as well as the schedule that each partition follows and a variety of other parameters that control the configuration of your system. Now I need to make some updates to the generated VCT file in order to accommodate some of the details of my model. Specifically, I'm going to be updating the names of the ARINC ports and updating the list of processes declared. In this case, we need to have four processes total, an initialization process for each partition, and a communication process for each partition. So I'm just going to copy and paste here for simplicity's sake. When you are using an ARINC partition in LynxOS, each process has to be enumerated specifically. Now, the initialization process can have an unspecified process path because its path is passed to the ARINC 653 init command at a different part of the VCT. However, our communication processes have to be explicitly called out here. Now that I've done that, I can click on my VCT and select the VCT validate button. That will show me that I have a couple of mistakes in this file. Specifically, the two processes I added were not referenced by any partitions. I'm going to go ahead and add those to the partitions. And now I will revalidate my file. Looks like I have one more warning. I did not update the number of ARINC processes in my file. There we go. Now we have no warnings. Next, I'm going to update the initialization paths. Now I need to update the port names. These also come directly from our C code, so I'm going to find them in the C source and we'll just copy and paste them in here. After updating the ports, I'm going to rerun a validation check, and it looks like we're all good. Now we're going to switch gears and start using Luminosity, which is the Lynx OS development IDE. I'm going to create four new projects here, one for each of the four source files. That's because I'm going to have four total processes configured in this system. I'll create my four projects and then copy and paste the source code from the example into these projects. Because these projects use ARINC 653 communication ports, they need to link the ARINC 653 library, so we'll add that in their project properties. And now I will just copy and paste the source code from the example into these projects. By default, Luminosity will automatically compile your projects into binaries that are ready to deploy. 
when you want to include a new binary in a Linksos build, you add that binary to the development environment and then update the build specification. Here I'm going to go into the bin directory and copy my binaries from my workspace into the bin directory. Once I've copied my binaries into the bin directory, I need to update the build configuration spec file. This will tell the build process that it needs to include those binaries in the image that gets deployed to my target. Here I'm looking at the list of files to be included in the target bin directory. And for expediency's sake, I already had these in. I'm just going to uncomment them. And now we're ready to go. Now that the spec file has been updated, I'm going to copy the VCT file that we generated in our Osate workspace onto my Linksos development machine. I'm going to update the VCT file in my working directory to the VCT file I just copied. And I will do a sanity check to make sure I do indeed have the file that came from my development system. That looks good. So now it's time to do a build. We'll do a make clean and then a make all and make net KDI. And finally, I will copy my image file into a TFTP boot directory so that I can use Pixie Boot for my target. I have some bad news. I booted my target and got a warning indicating there was an error in my VCT file. It looks like I have a typo. So let's find that and fix it in my Eric 653 process path. Looks like I had an I instead of an O for one of the process names. We'll revalidate the file and then copy it back to our LynxOS development machine. Again, we will update the VCT and do another make clean, make all, and make net KDI and copy it over. Now we will see the target booting and the output of our ping pong program. Here we're downloading an image using Pixie Boot. And now we can see from the perspective of partition one, the system starts up and is sending pings and receiving pongs. In this section, we're going to switch to a POSIX type partition. And we're going to demonstrate how we can update a VCT file in place using changes directly from AADL. Once again, we're going to instantiate our ping pong AADL model and generate a schedule for it. Again, we can look at the AADL schedule that's generated, which just extend the original model. We will instantiate the model with a generated schedule and create a new VCT. Now I'm going to open up that VCT and make a simple hand edit to it. In this case, I'm just updating the command line parameter to be a real command as opposed to just the example command. And I'm going to rename the file to VCT. Now I'm going to make a different change to my original AADL model. In this case, I'm going to rename both of my partitions. Then, because my AADL schedule model extends the original one, I just need to instantiate the schedule model again. Once this model is instantiated, I'll be able to again generate a VCT, but in this case I'm going to select update existing VCT. We will say yes to overriding conflicts because the 
partition names in our AADL model will conflict with those in the original VCT. Here we can see that our original VCT has been copied to a backup file and then updated so that it contains both our hand edit and the partition rename that was derived from AADL.